Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working over on the Tally Ho Capstan project. And uh, previously we were working on the base here. We actually got the whole board down through this uh, that we needed to for a the motor mount that's gonna have the drive that will have the gear that will power the uh, capstan drum. Uh, we've still gotta get the bolt hole pattern uh, drilled and put into this. And we're gonna be doing that again over on the mill machine using the digital readout with the bolt hole pattern uh, uh, tool that's built into the digital readout. So without further ado, let's kind of pick up where we left off and I uh, get this thing finished up. All right, so next step here is we do need to drill this bolt hole circle that's around here. So again, we've got seven holes, it's an eight hole pattern, but one hole's missing. Um, M12 times 1.75 is the tap size. These are all gonna be tapped and uh, According to the information, it's on 165 millimeter diameter, uh, which comes out to 6.496, so just right at six and a half inches on the diameter. And uh, what we're gonna do is use our digital readout, which has a bolt hole circle function built into it for doing exactly this. You go on to the center, you identify the center, you identify the radius, you identify the number of holes, and it'll calculate the positions and you just basically drive your mill to the coordinates uh, on the digital readout. And that's how we're gonna locate and drill these holes out. So let's uh, get that set up and we'll do that. So I'm over here at the digital readout. And again, we have the X and the Y axis zeroed out. This is my height and uh, it doesn't really matter what that is. I lowered it down a little bit ago. So there's a number there, but we're, not paying any attention to that. Uh, so the bolt hole circle function, what we need to do is come in here and actually hit this button right here, which will bring us into the bolt hole circle function mode. And here you see bolt hole circle. And uh, we're gonna hit enter, which will take us into that mode. Now I need to enter in my X and Y axis my center coordinates, you can offset these. We do have it set on the zero, zero. So I'm just gonna hit, leave them to zero. We're gonna enter and uh, let's see. I am following the directions here because I don't do this very often. We're just gonna hit enter again. All right, here's our radius. The radius we wanna put in and the radius is gonna be 3.284, 3.284. Two, eight, four. The radius is, of course, half the diameter. And we'll hit enter. All right, the angle. The angle is the starting angle relative to the x-axis. And in this case, uh, it really doesn't matter. We're just going to leave it at zero. We don't need to offset that angle. So basically what that's saying is, is if you want the your top hole not to be rotated over a little bit, you can put that angle in there. We're gonna leave it at zero, uh, it, it should work out fine. All right, this is the number of holes and we want an eight hole pattern. Again, we're only gonna drill seven of them, but we need an eight hole pattern. So I'll put in eight. And now what it has done is it has basically told me the distance I need to move to get this thing on the first hole pattern. And what it's gonna do is it's going to just read zero whenever you, zero, zero, whenever you get to the right place. So we're gonna unlock our table. And we're going to start navigating to zero, zero here. I'll work on getting the first one and then we will get the second one here. There we go, zero, zero. We are on our first hole. Okay, first hole. We got a spotting drill in here. We'll come down and spot a hole. I'll just get my hole centered there started. And we'll put our drill bit in. And 
This will be for a tap size for a 12 millimeter hole. I really don't want this hole to go all the way through uh, the casting on this particular hole. Uh, it's gonna be coming through a dog down there on the back side. So I think we're gonna just probably stop about right there and call good enough, good enough. <laughs> So next I need to tap that hole. I got my tap, let me go get set up for this and I'll be right back. I'm gonna start by putting a little anchor lube down in here. This is my tapping fluid that I like to use. Uh, does a really good job. So anyway, we're gonna put some of that down in the hole. I've got a tap follower in here. This is spring loaded. We'll just kind of put this down in here and Let's see, I'm gonna load that down and we're gonna rotate our tap. Now, this is gonna be a little aggravating because the tap is not gonna make a full circle here. We're just gonna have to make do with what we got here. getting down to the bottom of that hole and that's as far as I can go. Now normally when you're drilling a um, or tapping a hole here that's in a blind hole like this you'll want to use a uh, bottoming tap to go all the way to the bottom and I plan on doing that but I don't have a bottoming tap in this size. I'm gonna have to order one, but we can just go down this hole. You always start with this tap anyway, and then you finish it with the bottoming tap. I'm gonna have to come back and do that at a later step. And that'll just get me threads all the way down to the bottom of that hole. Uh, right now, the threads are kind of tapered in the bottom uh, just because that's what you do on your starter tap. You don't have it cutting straight through. You need to get started and uh, kind of taper in there. All right, let me get this one out. We're going to drive to our next hole and get it drilled and tapped. And we'll do this uh, six more times to get the seven holes. I've navigated to my second hole here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and drill this one. It's kind of uh, right in a steel plug that was threaded in here, but we're going to go with it. This hole and this hole both need to be blind because I don't want them to go through the dog on the other side, but the rest of the holes can be through holes. All right, go ahead and clean that up and we will put another dab of anchor lube down in here for tapping fluid. That just gives us some lubrication for that hole. Let's see, put our follower in first there. And I think this one will clear all the way around. That's good. All right, we'll tap it on through.
All right, that's through. Take that one out and we'll navigate to our next hole. All right, let's drive to the next one. I just went through the hole and again, I'm just going to zero, zero on the digital readout. Let's see, we moved in one axis here. Uh-oh. That's gonna be an issue. Don't have enough movement to go all the way back for that hole. I'm hitting the post, but we can, we can accommodate for that. We're just gonna to have to come back and drill this hole a little bit later on. I'm gonna to go to the next one. We'll drive to that one. We can drill that one right there. Put our anchor lube down in the hole. All right, we got that one through. All right, this one's gonna be a challenge because again, it kind of is right in this transition between the flange here. And uh, I'm hoping we can kind of get this center established using the spotting drill. We'll just have to be real careful and kind of Just get it down in there to where we can hopefully get a hole started right on that center. So it's almost kind of like milling here. All right, we got a uh, hole started in the bottom now. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a pilot hole at a smaller size that goes clear through that will let us get right down in that bottom. I'm gonna use a smaller center drill here. I just wanna make sure that that bottom is actually in the very, very bottom down there. And it looks like it is. It is, so we're good. So I think what we'll do is we'll use a quarter inch drill and we're gonna drill a pilot hole to start with. We're gonna drill it through. Now we'll put our regular size drill bit in here and hopefully follow right down through that hole. All right. Now we're gonna be kind of pulling it out there at the top, but once we kind of get down in that bottom, it should hopefully pull it back over. We're good there. All 
I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually tap this hole from the other side. It's going to be nearly impossible to start that tap up at the top. But the other side's flush with the bottom, so we can just drill through or tap through there, and it should uh, thread that in properly. All right, we got two more holes to drill. We got one more that's going to be on a shoulder back here, and then we got to deal with this one up front uh, that we're going to have to recenter things up to get it done. So I'll go ahead and get this one done, and we'll bring you back for the, the, the final one up front. Well, I got all my holes drilled except the one that the head's not out far enough for, so... We're going to change the setup here. I need to move the head out a little bit farther. I thought I had it out far enough while ago, but I was wrong. So um, adds a little bit of complication here. We're going to have to go out there and we're going to have to get the coaxial indicator in there and find the center of that hole that we bored. But it shouldn't be too terribly bad. Let's go ahead and take our own out a little bit more. And I believe that should give us plenty of room. I got to get an inch of adjustment back over here. So we'll tighten that back down and let me get the indicator out. We'll refine our center of the bore and we set up our bolt hole circle and we should find our last hole. Uh, we got the coaxial indicator set back up on the bore now, and I've got this thing running within about a half a thou of being centered up. Which um, we got a nice smooth bore in there, so this uh, indicator works a lot better in this case. So we are basically centered back up now on the center of this bore, and we're just going to use that same bolt hole pattern routine again to find our last hole that we got to get drilled. All right, I think we're ready to go here. We're gonna drill this one again, get that center started. Drill this uh, tap hole. Again, this one does not go all the way through. I think that's probably enough. And we'll tap this hole. Put a little anchor lube in there. Get our tap wrench going here. That's the bottom. We'll pull our center out. And again, we will come back with a bottoming tap. And uh, once I get one ordered and I uh, get that hole bottomed out. But uh, we are done for now with this. I still need to tap those other two in the back. And again, I'll do that from the other side as well. But other than that, we have our bow hole circle done here. So let's get that tap out. We'll get this cleaned up and this is ready to come off the mill. We got it off the machine now and uh, I did go ahead and tap these two holes. And you can see we got the threads all the way up in there. No problem at all to tap it from the other side. Just did that by hand. Uh, yeah, I think we got it done. We got our hole pattern in there. We got our bore done. Um, this piece I think is finished. Now we've still got to make a plate that's going to mount over it all this, that this uh, thing will bracket onto or whatever. That's going to be an upcoming uh, project here in the shop. But uh, we got, got this uh, part done. I was a little bit nervous about doing this, but it came out pretty nice. Happy with how it turned out. Just a look from the other side. This is the actual top side uh, of the piece. Uh, the piece will be bolted up underneath the bottom. Of course, we'll have the screws come up through here. The reason I didn't want to drill these through is these, uh, these two holes that are up underneath this uh, piece here is where the 
little dog goes in here and I really didn't want to have that thread uh, or screw coming through the bottom there and risking coming out and interfering with that whole mechanism so or, or making that weaker. So uh, there is a hole there and a hole there uh, that's hidden but blind in that hole. Anyway, just thought let's take a quick look at that as well. And just like that, I think we got this project knocked out. So uh, again, very happy with how this turned out. Um, pretty straightforward, no big problem at all. Uh, I was uh, expecting this to be a little bit more of a challenge, to be honest with you. Maybe I was just worried for no reason, but uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things going on here, getting this alignment in here, getting this hole with a pretty tight tolerance, getting a bolt hold back pattern put in there. A lot of moving parts, but uh, we got it knocked out uh, over on the milling machine. No big issue at all. So guys, with that, uh, that's gonna be a wrap on uh, this particular step. We got lots more to do on this uh, capstan restoration project, but uh, one more part checked off, one more step checked off, and uh, we're gonna continue on as we go. Guys, uh, that will that'll be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. It really helps to feed the algorithms over on YouTube. Big huge thank you to those that subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you for those that have. And also big huge thank you for those who support the channel financially through Patreon and PayPal. Uh, it really enables me to take the time to be able to shoot these videos, edit the videos, bring the content to you, and just share what's going on out here in the shop and my restoration efforts. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.